The following is one of the short stories from my book, Dear Frickin' Fear. It's called The Judges. I hope you enjoy. The Christians stood nervously before the doors of their judgment hall. Who knew what would happen to them as they faced judgment day? Long ago, they had mapped out their own lives and had chosen to be judged upon its completion. The Creator accepted their plans with the stipulation that He would choose who would judge them. The Christians, having held themselves accountable to their Holy Bible, had condemned themselves with the scripture, Judge not, lest ye be judged, for none had lived their lives without judgment against others. Even the best among them judged others for judging. The Christians in the hallway outside the courtroom grew silent for a moment as a group of judges walked by, all small in stature and wearing hooded robes in a variety of colors. Those waiting in line began to whisper among themselves as they struggled to see who their judges might be. There was a large video screen outside the courtroom so that everyone standing in line could see and hear the proceedings within. Inside were seats that circled the room, and in the middle was a small raised platform. This was where the guilty would stand to face their judgment. The members of the court filed into the courtroom, taking their places in front of the seats that surrounded the arena. Once all were situated before their chairs, the judges removed their hoods in unison and sat down. Each of them appeared to be a child, representing every nation and belief across the world. The first Christian to be judged was brought forward. A large crystal orb appeared above him and began to play scenes from the man's life, starting from the most recent and playing backwards. The first scene showed him beating another man. The victim had refused to hand over his wallet and a struggle ensued between them. The man being judged lost control of his emotions and raged on, unable to stop himself until the other man was dead. As the memories rewound to early years of the man's life, he grew younger. It was not long before he, too, was a youngster standing before the child judges. The memory now playing before them depicted an angry uncle chasing the young boy around a cabin for drinking a sip of his beer. The beating cost the boy three weeks in the hospital, for which he was later punished by a father who resented the medical bills. You should know better than to cross your uncle, the father's yell echoed across the hall. They all watched the father backhand the young boy's face. The guilty child stood in the hall, ready to receive his punishment. One of the judges, a small young boy, descended the stairs from his judgment seat. His eyes looked familiar to the accused. They were the eyes of the man he had killed. The young judge approached the boy and hugged him, whispering, I forgive you, and I love you. Tears streamed from both their eyes as the power of love filled them. The accused boy was released, and the child judge returned to his seat. He was found not guilty. There was no punishment. The boy moved to the other end of the courtroom near a balcony that opened up into the sky outside. He took a seat on a strikingly white bench. Next, the boy's father and uncle were brought to the judgment seat. Again, crystals above their heads began to play through their lives as everyone observed Scenes flashed by, showing their own father being killed in a farming accident, and the two boys being evicted with their mother from the farm as it was foreclosed. 
a neighbor down the road took a fancy for their mom and brought them into his home. Before long, the neighbor was slapping the boys around and leaving them to fend for themselves. They were forced to sleep in the barn. While their lives played through, they were also transformed into young boys, just as the previous defendant. Then a scene played above the uncle's head, and he resumed his adult form. A young woman approached him on the raised stage. The uncle recognized her as his wife, who had left him one day when he was out of town. She had fled from his abuse. She held a bundle in her arms, and as she walked closer to him in the courtroom, the scene above his head showed him violently punching her in the stomach while she was obviously pregnant. She had lost the baby then, but now she held her swaddled infant. She approached the uncle, who was now sobbing uncontrollably, and placed the youngster in his arms. She moved close to his ear and whispered, I forgive you, and I love you. The uncle looked into her eyes with shock. How could she? Then the baby began to grow in his arms until he had to set him down. The baby became a teenaged young man. He smiled at his father and hugged him tightly as he whispered in the man's ear, I forgive you. I love you. I look forward to getting to know you. At the end of the hall, his recently judged nephew, who was seated on the white bench in the balcony, stood and walked towards them. He faced his uncle, placed a hand on his cheek and smiled. Then he turned to his father and embraced him. No words were necessary. The love energy was enough. All of them became children. They joined hands and walked to the balcony. When they reached the edge, they shined so bright, they appeared as colorful orbs of light. Together, they floated up into a large sea of light above them. The Christians standing in line had been watching intently. The event made many of them realize that no one needed to judge them because they were the ones who were condemning themselves. As the realization sank in, some people drifted out of line, becoming orbs of light who drifted away. Yet, there still remained a stubborn group who were adamant in their desire to be judged. Some felt so guilty of their sins that they wanted to be held accountable. Others felt they had lived such good lives that they wanted their reward. An acclaimed Christian author approached the judgment seat. He walked proudly and fearlessly, knowing there wasn't much to taint his life. He had dedicated himself to writing books to help people understand their challenges and rid themselves of sin. His life scenes showed how the man's book shamed and condemned love between two people of the same gender. Scenes flashed of several young Christian teenagers killing themselves. After the first scene, a child judge stepped forward. After the next scene, another child came forward. Then another came forward, and then another, over and over, until a crowd of 1,000 children from all over the world stood in front of the author. He no longer sought a reward. Instead, he collapsed in great cries of regret. One by one, each child came forward. The author, on his knees, was face to face with them. Each one wiped a tear from his eye and hugged him tightly and whispered, I love you, and I forgive you. 
When the 1,000 children were done, the author became a child himself. He walked to the balcony, and in a flash of light, he was gone. An elderly man ran in next, eager to be judged and condemned. He had spent much time in line thinking about the hurt and pain he had inflicted on others. He bowed down before all the judges, so chucked up with tears that he wasn't able to speak. The scenes of his life showed him being unloving towards his children and wife, pastoring a church of people in judgmental actions against anyone who did not comply with his way of thinking. He was standing with signs, picketing funerals of fallen soldiers, condemning gay people, children, and the whole world to hell. The scenes were frenzied. When he finally calmed down to look up at his judges, the arena was empty. No one remained, and no one was left standing in line. A large booming voice echoed in the courtroom. Where are your accusers? The old man answered, There is no one here except me. He thought for a moment in silence and then smiled. He slowly stood, walked to the balcony, and was greeted by a sea of white, bright orbs. Tears of love and joy flowed from the man's eyes as he, too, became a white orb and joined the great sea of unconditional love. The judgment hall of the Christian stood empty and silent. The Islamic people stood nervously outside the doors of their own judgment hall. Dot, dot, dot. (laughs) I hope you enjoyed this story about unconditional love. You take care.